following is a presentation of the iRacing Esports Network. Welcome, one and all, here on VX Online on the iRacing Esports Network for the first round of the Porsche Super Cup Australasia Championship. This is certainly going to be a fantastic season of one of the Premier GT Series in the Australia New Zealand Simsphere. My name is Reese Gardner, and joining me in the commentary box once again, Brock Cadai. Brock, time for Porsches. It's been a while since we've seen that on V8 Online. Yeah, we had the Super Cup Series running alongside V8 Scops uh, at some point last year, and that provided some good entertainment. The The fact that it's a one-make series really makes it great. There's no sort of discrepancies between the cars like we see in the SSA Championship uh, with all the different GT3 cars. The setups aren't that complicated either. So this really comes down to how the driver can push hard and make the most of the car they've got underneath them. Yes, indeed. All running the Porsche 991 GT3 Cup car. And uh, certainly, as you've mentioned, uh, the setup options are quite limited on these things. So it does come down to what the driver can do to get the most out of their car. Don't have as much to rely on in terms of uh, aerodynamic grip either. Mechanical grip is also at a bit of a premium. And of course, we've got to think about the fact that these cars are rear engine. So uh, they got that rear engine hanging out past the rear axle. Certainly makes for some interesting driving behavior around a track like Interlagos. Yeah, well, that's it. And that brake bias as well is going to be critical tonight to make sure that you don't swing around and block the track or anything like that. So they're going to have to manage that really carefully. I know some drivers will even try and change it between certain parts of the course, particularly through the middle where you've got some of those that the sort of 180 corners that you've really got to manage around there and get your foot down at the right time and make sure when you're braking, you're not hitting it too hard. These cars are prone to locking up very easily. So these guys are going to have to be very careful as well when making overtaking maneuvers to not make the mistake and throw it down the inside, hit people off. Yes, yeah, certainly. You've got to also take into account with, uh, with the braking and all that, that into Lagos, is a track with plenty of braking zones where you can brake a little bit later than you think you can, particularly down at turn one. You find yourself braking at uh, about the 50 meter marker in some quick cars down into that very tight center S bend. So it will be interesting seeing what the drivers can do down there at turn one. But uh, currently they're there in late afternoon conditions and uh, they've got less than half of the practice session left to go before they go racing for the first of two 20-minute sprint races we've got going tonight. Yeah, it's going to be a pretty exciting format tonight. We've got no pit stops and nothing of the like. These guys are in an all-out 20-minute brawl to the finish, and we've got qualifying has already set the grid for race one, and then the, the finish from race one will set the grid for race two. So these guys, when they're racing along, they've got to consider that they still have another 20-minute sprint race tonight, and their position in this race one will dictate where they start there. So if they make a silly move and they go back a lot, they're going to be making their life seriously hard. So they've got to think about that when they're making their moves from where they start as well. And, you know, if they get taken out, 
down to the back. And we've got a big field here tonight as well. So I'm sure you do not want to be at the back and having to work your way through, particularly with no sort of you know straight line advantage or anything like that. It's all the same. Yeah, it certainly is. And uh, looking at uh, looking at the field that we've got going tonight, we got uh, 36 cars in this first split server here. There is another split running as well. Uh, the second split for the uh, the drivers that were not able to set the quickest lap times. And of course, they'll be having a fun race of their own. This is the one that we're going to be focusing on. This uh, top one where Michael Healy took pole position in qualifying for one performance racing. And coming into this uh, this first race, it's a bit of a balancing game because the drivers aren't familiar with each other, I think, after, you know, some time out of the saddle in the Porsche. There have been other Porsche series in uh, the AusNZ community run, but uh, this specific set of drivers will be together once again. And they're going to have to find their feet uh, in the midst of a big field on turn one, lap one, etc. So do they make those big moves or do they hold back and uh, try and consolidate a good finishing position for race two there is a little bit of strategy here for this first race yeah that's exactly it and that's also what that'll that's what can contribute sorry to the to this race as well as that these guys are going to be fighting it out hard it's a sprint race no pit stops like i said before but equally they've got to think about their position exactly where they're going to end up because you don't want to be at the back of the pack in a race like this it takes a lot to go from the back to the front, particularly with such a short race. Safety cars are in play, but hopefully we don't see any. We just want an all-out race here tonight. I'm really keen as we're now about 30 seconds away from the race session going live. Yes, indeed. And the drivers are just uh, going around making their final uh, adjustments, their final sighting laps of the circuit in these conditions that are a bit different to what they've seen in the qualifying session. So... It's going to be a very interesting one. Scott Szyslowski bringing it into the pits, I'm noticing. and But the majority of the drivers are now in the pits, just waiting for the session to tick down. Got a couple of drivers out there still uh, testing the waters in terms of space for battles, but they will be snapped back to the pits right about now in a few seconds. And then we'll be able to get those grid results up on screen so we can see the state of play for tonight's racing. So, race one going live. And in first place, we've got Michael Healy, Dylan Shepard, Jordan McDonnell, and Joshua Anderson making it. And one performance racing, one, two, three, four. Forza Nil Nabi and Anthony Winkleman for Trick Sim Sports complete fifth and sixth with Brett Cananzi in seventh place. Altus Esports' Zachary Hanlon in 8th, 9th. Wayne Burke for Synergy Sim Racing and Mark Rayner rounding out the top 10. And in 11th place, we've got Adam Highland. 12th is Dean O'Brien. 13th, Scott Larnack. 14th, Griffin Gardner. 15th, Scotty Harris. 16th, Ben Dow. 17th, David Haynes. 18th, Hayden Dotman. Adam Briggs in 19th and Corey Preston is rounding out the top 20 here tonight. In 21st position, we got Mitchell McLeod in car 40 with Barden Reed in 22nd. Jimmy Ball, 23rd with Cody Bircher in 24th. Gary Hamilton in car triple one in 25th position with Jason Hyde, Joshua Skin, Michael Kirkham, and Michael Hammond uh, in uh, up to 29th position. Top 30 rounded out by Shannon Mason. The green flag flies, and away they go. And already seeing a bit of a block and maneuver there from Jordan McDonald, make, getting it to the inside, trying to defend against Joshua Anderson. The field piling into turn one for the first time. A full field of Porsche 911 GT3 Cup cars. And it looks like most of them, they've actually managed to get through there quite cleanly, Brock, as they come out onto the back straight for the first time. Yeah, you don't see that too often through there. It usually gets pretty messy. They're, they're doing well at the moment here. Love the scream of this Porsche Cup car. It's Whoa. absolutely awesome. We've got one of the OPR cars off in the background there. He's... Goodness me. Yeah, they're oh, getting oh, a bit we messy got here. We've got someone spinning, and that's, that's Soloski in the ASM car. He's just done a barrel roll. Just as yeah. we were saying, it was great. We've got cars in the air. This is immense. Oh, no, and that is... that is the safety car. We were hoping for a nicer race here, and it's all gone wrong goodness me well, that's going to take some time to dissect for sure let's go back and see what happened there 
Of course, uh, CPR cart and sim parts replay. There was a big lag spike in the server at the same time, so it's not quite clear how uh, how that eventuated. But I do notice that people like uh, like Jimmy Ball and Barden Reed uh, started spinning on their own, which uh, obviously didn't help matters for the rest of the field going through there. Szlowski, uh, I think, a bit of an innocent victim in all of that, but. Goodness me, that is absolute carnage there right now. Gary Hamilton also getting involved with Mark McDonald uh, in the turn after that. So, interesting scenes to start off the championship here. Yeah, uh, that's not good. Uh, I imagine that that lag spike may have had something to do with it. Oh, it's good to know that it wasn't just me. It seems that we a uh, few of us got it there. So, maybe has something to do with the cars all disappearing and they reappear inside each other basically but uh yeah it was what we were hoping to avoid for a sprint race like this so and there we go we've had uh we've had simon confirm that the servers died on him so the yellows come out as well so i dare say that, that incident probably has something to do with the fact that there was that big lag spike and uh as we know when we all jump back in there are probably cars you're within cars and all these crashes have just occurred a shame to see but not much we can do when uh when it's the servers talking not the drivers yeah, certainly. That is a real shame. But, uh, well, nonetheless, the racing is going to continue on pretty soon. Everybody lining up behind the roof safety car, and uh, the lights are still on, so that's going to be one extra lap after this one that the pace car is going to complete. They're just going through this very slow section of the lap now. So, currently in the lead, Michael Healy maintains the lead of this race and i mean obviously things have been mixed up quite a bit anthony winkleman and forzan el nabi have assumed third and fourth so that will certainly be a big benefit for the trick sim sports guys that's two of their competition in one performance racing out of contention here in race one zach hanlon making it up to fifth so uh, a bit of a success story for a few drivers so far, but obviously not much racing to be done so far. Yeah, well, we made it uh, about four corners before that lag spike kicked in and things got a little bit hairy. So, but like you said, those Trick Sim Sports guys have definitely benefited from that. And those guys are not looking like they've got any damage on their car either. So we've seen in the GT3 series uh, in SSA that Trick Sim Sports are, have some great drivers behind them. And Winkleman and El Nabi are, are both very well known in the community. So they may be able to take it up to the OPR guys and really try and challenge them for this race one win here tonight. Yes, indeed. Joshua Anderson, I think, out of the uh, One Performance Racing guys, has uh, advanced the most. He started in fourth and now currently in second place. So Shepard and McDonnell both involved in the lap one incidents. So certainly not what they would want to get out of their night so far. And this race is already a quarter gone. Very short night of racing tonight. Of course, we've got another 20-minute race left to go here, but uh, the drivers won't have many laps left to get their racing on. Try and advance if they've been disadvantaged on lap one. Yeah, I really, really hope we don't see the, the old saying come out, safety cars breed safety cars. And in this case, because we have so little of this race left, it may be the case that everyone's going to get that red mist to send and they're all just going to want to make up positions. So hopefully creates some great racing for us and no no more crashing. But um, I've got my fingers crossed on this end, hoping that we won't see it. But we've got uh, the top five now are Healy, Anderson, El Nabi, Winkleman and Hanlon. Uh, Hanlon made up a few spots as well. He's gone from eighth to fifth. So it's definitely benefited a few people while some, some guys like we saw McDonald has now gone back. He's in 27th position, I think. Yeah, we've got a few guys actually coming out of the pit lane now, so they have yeah. been lapped by the looks of it. Um, but they will still go out and complete this race and hopefully pick up a few points and also solidify their position for the next race. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, people like Gary Hamilton, Barden Reed, uh, also uh, Jimmy Ball, David Jellings uh, coming out of the pits as well, Michael Hammond too. So they've gotten back out there, obviously in very low positions and not much of a chance to make up but hopefully for them things work out okay for race two 
Jordan McDonnell, oh, sorry, Dylan Shepard, uh, weaving his tires a little bit there on that back straight. Get a little bit of heat into those tires. Tends to help a bit, actually, in this uh, 911 GT3 Cup car. So we'll see how that works out for him. Only got a few turns left, though. Up at the front, the lights on the safety car are now out. And they just got uh, this very slow hairpin turn. This is a prime overtaking opportunity under racing conditions. Very easy to throw one up the inside, but easy to come back down the hill and uh, try and make a pass at Junkau that last turn, or the last real turn. All the rest of the left-handers on the circuit after this one are completely flat out. So, safety car entering that uh, final actual turn now. We're going to get racing again soon, Brock. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this. This is going to be some great racing. We've got about 12, uh, 12, 13 minutes left here now. The computer's predicting about six laps. Those engines are getting ready to accelerate hard here. OPR 1 and 2, Trick Sim Sports 3, 4, and Zach Hanlon in the Altus Esports machine in fifth place there. They're coming around. The safety car isn't in pit lane just yet, so they're being held up quite a bit here because of the really long straight. You have to wait a second or two. So they all come filing around onto the front straight here. They're looking eager to race. We've got Winkleman already looking around, and there goes Healy. He's accelerated away now. So he's gotten a pretty good jump there. We've got... Uh, sorry, yeah, Winkleman has dropped back a bit there, actually, and Hanlon is all over the back of him coming into turn one. Oh, do, going for the move, try, actually. Yeah, go around the outside there, and he looks like he's actually going to make that work. Jeez. They're still side by side coming into turn three here. He's going to have to give that position back to Winkleman now, but he's right on the back of him. We'll I'll tell you what. Oh. God, yeah, sorry, Brock. They've actually both lost time there to El Nabi in those first couple of turns, and Hanlon pulling out once again to try and go for that move. Got to be careful with how hard you brake in this Porsche. As you said, during the warm-up, Brock, those brakes are incredibly sensitive, but Hanlon not successful at getting past Winkleman. Uh, meanwhile, back in the field, we got a hell of a battle pack behind Ben Dowell in 13th. Yeah, you can say that again. These guys are going hell for leather at the moment, side by side as they come up through this set of corners here and into the middle of this circuit, which is very, very technical, but also provides quite a few overtaking opportunities. They are still side by side here. They were three wide for a second there as they come around the corner here. But Dow Gardner has cleared wide. out a bit. Yeah, Gardner's... He's not doing too great. Having a look yeah. back through the field here, they all look to have settled it out a little bit got Shannon Mason's turned around at the back of the pack there. They're still side by side, number 55 car there. And that Ben Maxmobile side by side with uh, Gary Hamilton, actually, who's trying to fight through the pack here. Who's been usually quite a good driver in these cars. So obviously the qualifying didn't go as well for him as what he did hope, but they all come around and we complete our first proper racing lap here tonight. McKeely out front, not quite clearing out. And we've got El Nabi right on the back of these guys as well. Yeah, El Nabi's keeping with them well. Oh, Healy actually running wide a bit there in turn one, and that's going to actually open up to an attack from his teammate, Joshua Anderson. El Nabi might want to try and uh, stay with these guys, see if he can get something out of this. They're all having a bit of a look here. Michael Healy staying steadfast in position number one, though. All overshooting just a little bit. Those fronts aren't exactly agreeing with him, and so... That's going to let Joshua Anderson through into the lead of this race. And now we've got a proper battle here for the first three positions in this race. El Nabi trying to find his way around Healy, who obviously is having a couple of issues of some kind. Healy going straight for the inside to protect. And, and El Nabi a little bit Oh, and there we go. He's going to have to slot back in behind Winkleman and uh, Hanlon getting caught up in that as well. He almost ran into the back of El Nabi, and so that's opened him up to an attack from Wayne Burke. So this track's nature in terms of flow really catching a few drivers out here. Yeah, well, that's exactly it. And I'm just looking at a little bit of a battle pack. Oh, we got cars around at the hairpin. Oh, there's a car oh, upside no. down. That was Gary Hamilton there. I think he's just gone up and over. That's seriously a shame to see there. That really is. We've got more contact up as they come onto the front straight here. They're really going for it at the moment. Yeah, they certainly are. And that, that incident was caused uh, by Jason Hyde losing it under brakes. Uh, just completely slid and had nowhere to go. He was a passenger and uh, went right into Jimmy Ball. Of course, Gary Hamilton caught up in that as well, as well as a few other drivers. So that's a shame for them. Oh, we got another 
another uh, incident at turn one. David Jellings now uh, involved in an incident with uh, Jordan McDonnell and Jimmy Ball. And Ball and McDonnell have actually made very heavy contact. Oh, yeah, that's McDonald on the wall. This race one is definitely not going the way he wanted. He's back in pit lane. McDonald actually started from third place, so he was in a great position. And unfortunately, because of that lag spike, that sent him back to the pits. And uh, I dare say he will be starting from the back of this uh, back of this back race. Yeah, looking at Ben Dowell and Adam Highland here. Oh, Dowell with a very courageous move up the inside. He's managed to make it work really well, actually, making his way past Highland, who... He's also involved in a bit of a battle with Mitch McLeod. Next car in front of these guys is Cody Bircher, who is battling with the other TTL car of Scott Larnack. So these guys have formed a nice chain here at the moment. We'll see whether or not anyone can make any moves. They're actually running out of time. This race has gone about 13 minutes now, so not much time left. Yeah, this is... This is flying by. We're just going to have a quick look at Burke and Hanlon here as Hanlon's up in front, but Burke is in the slipstream coming down into turn one. And we'll wait and see whether he tries to stick his nose out. He's certainly looking. He won't do it down there, but he's still nice and close. He Hanlon's run a little bit wide. Might compromise his exit through turn two here. Burke tried to take a wider line there, and Hanlon definitely hasn't gotten the exit he will have wanted there. So we'll watch Burke in the slipstream here as he comes down into what will be turn four. He may try and throw it down the inside. He's definitely having a look, trying to assess if it's going to be the move for him. But no, he's going to stay in there. Smart moves there. We don't want to cause any more incidents. And right now, he's in a really good position to start race two. This is what we were talking about earlier, this strategy. And yeah, just certain. having a look behind you, we've got Kananzi, Larnak, and Rayner also battling it hard. Oh, yeah, Larnak trying to go for that move up the inside on Rayner, almost getting into the back of him, but uh, just holds back a little. And that's another prime overtaking opportunity right there. You could see Adam Highland in the background uh, defending from Mitch McLeod. So this is a proper battle pack here. Now, Kananzi doesn't have to worry too much about these guys. They're all kind of tripping over each other right now. Have a look at Larnak versus Bircher. Bircher got a really good exit from the hairpin, but uh, unfortunately unable to hold the outside. So now he's... Uh, an OPR filling and a TTL sandwich. Not for long, though. Larnak has messed up the exit of that last turn, and he's going to have to go all the way to the back of that train, possibly worse. Looks like something happened to Hanlon as well. Not quite sure what went on there. We're going to get a CPR cart and sim parts replay of that. He actually made the same kind of mistake, just went a bit wide on the exit of Junkao, and, uh, well, you know, when you've got a, a long flat out section as long as that into Lagos you're gonna lose out big time yeah well that's exactly it and uh, we saw Hanlon's drop back a couple of places there just as that battle was developing with Burke and uh, yeah where Larnax lost a few as well he's gone all the way back down to 13th place from inside the top 10 so he's gonna have to cop that one on the chin there a, a mistake that is easily made but he's starting to catch up on the back of this pack here with McLeod as well these guys are holding each other up because they're all trying to look for moves to make and McLeod is at the back end we've got Cody Bircher at the front here and they're so close they're just about nose to tail as they're looking in these braking zones here they've got roughly three and a half laps to make a move about five minutes left in this race that is nothing when it comes to this sort of racing Certainly not. So Cody Birch, uh, you can see he's very hungry to make that move on Ben Dowell. Looks like his mid-corner speed is a lot better than Dowell's. He's just driving the car into the corners that little bit harder. So it's uh, it's not working out too well for him in terms of straight line runs, though. We'll have to see how he goes there. Ben Dowell, though, manages to hook up the exit of Junkau nicely. But he will have one hell of a slipstream being provided to the guys behind him. Rayner, just up ahead of him, sitting pretty in eighth position. Doesn't look like anyone's close enough to make a move down here. Very easy to make a mistake into turn one. Just tightens up a little bit in the middle and then you've got to switch right back to the other side of the circuit. Doesn't look like anyone has made a mistake there, although it is very easy to make. Up behind them, uh, behind Lana, we've got Corey Preston, I'm noticing, in 14th position. Uh, where did Preston start in 20th? So he's had a pretty good run here today, uh, so far at least. 
Yeah, he's had a pretty quiet race. He's just bided his time and he's made up the positions where he can. And yeah, he's made up six positions, which is really good to see. And it means he's putting himself in an even better spot for the next race to pick up some good points and make up even more positions. So he doesn't look like he has the speed over these next couple of laps to really take to these guys in that battle pack up there. But equally, it doesn't look like, providing he doesn't make a mistake, he can be caught by Joshua skin behind. So good effort there. Yes, indeed. And just up ahead of them, uh, up in front of Mark Rayner. Oh, looks like uh, Forzan has just passed Anthony in the Trick Sim Sports camp. So that's a swap there. They're falling behind, though, relative to the OPR 1 2 up ahead. And it looks like at this rate is only going to be two laps left in this race they have they are rapidly running out of time to try and make a move of course uh, i guess team orders out of the question at trick sim sports especially at this stage in the season they don't mind having a bit of a race with each other oh well that's it we're at round one of ten at the moment you know points aren't an issue while you want to pick them up where you can and when you can seriously shouldn't be worrying about this sort of thing right now just go out there have fun and race the opr guys up there anderson made a brilliant move and sliced down the inside of healy and made it work and obviously that's what he needed to do and he got it done so it's great to see not only teams battling but there's inter oh no can Nancy around can Nancy? oh goodness me oh, that is a big incident a big smash that was the battle pack we were watching before they all went into him oh Oh my lord, that is not good at all. What on earth happened to oh, Kananzi no. there? Every single one of them. Larnak oh. was probably the luckiest one of that out the back. Preston will have made up some bog positions from that too. Oh, he clogged the track Goodness. there. That is such a shame to see. It just looks to me like Kananzi uh, maybe missed his braking marker a little. Went to the back of Wayne Burke, braking for turn four and uh, just locked up and slid. So he was stopped at the apex of turn four. He actually, wow. slid, he actually slid forward just a yeah. tiny bit there off the brakes, and that put him right onto the apex of the corner. And that, yeah, those guys, they were so close coming through line of stern. There was no hope for them. That's, uh, that's a shame to see, because that was a great battle pack. I hope they're all together in the next race, because I really want to see 20 minutes of hard battling between those guys. Yes, indeed. Well, Ben Dowell and Cody Birch are... Looks like Bircher definitely has the run on Dowell here. Dowell with some major damage to the front of his car. So this is going to have to be the mother of all defensive drives. But Bircher, with a much cleaner car, looks like he may be the one to get this. Up the front, though, looks like this is going to be white flag. Joshua Anderson and Michael Healy currently bringing home a fantastic one two for one performance racing but the trick sim sports guys also doing a really good job there in third and fourth and it looks to me like Bircher has managed to get by Dowell in the process of all that so Dowell actually sliding down the field here a little bit we got Preston now on the back of him trying to uh, make up a few positions and Preston oh he's trying to stick his nose in but there's just not enough space at least through this section of the circuit no that's it preston just needs to wait a second here the straight line speed differential between him and bircher will be massive once they get to that straight and bircher's locked up there preston's still right on there behind him so that straight line differential will be probably what will mean preston can get pipped up again there so i think bircher is in uh got leaders well, coming across the line now as well to finish this 20 minute race here so preston is fighting hard i think by now he will have made up about 10 spots as well yep so, well joshua anderson though coming across the line for a fantastic victory and uh michael healy bringing it home in p2 so one performance racing half of their top five squad was uh put out of contention but a really good finish from those guys yeah i was Oh, so it looks to me like Corey Preston managed to get by Ben Dowell by a thousandth of a second. So, I mean, it's the position, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it doesn't get much closer than that, does it? He, Preston, he was, he played the smart game there. He stuck right in behind through that more technical section instead of throwing it down the inside and then waited until he knew he could get past and yet yeah, just pipped him there. So that's a, that's a great race there by Corey Preston, up 10 positions from his starting position and that'll put him in the top 10 to start the next race. So that's really where you want to be to capitalize. 
It certainly is. I think for now, though, before we gear up for race two, we'll run through the results for race one. Remember, this is going to be the grid for race two with this event format. So Anderson earns himself a pole position by finishing in P1 here. Michael Healy in second place. Boz and El Nabi coming home in third. Winkleman fourth. So OPR, OPR, trick and trick. Wayne Burke for Synergy Sim Racing in fifth place from ninth. Good run from him. Zach Hanlon, though, sliding back to eighth from a sixth place starting position. Adam Highland doing very well to finish in seventh place with Scott Larnack in eighth. Cody Bircher, the mother of all runs from 24th to ninth. And Corey Preston earning himself a position in the top 10. So then we've got uh, Ben Dowell in 11th place, who just got pipped by Preston on that last lap, as we've seen. Joshua Skin in 12th. Griffin Gardner, 13th. Dylan Shepard in 14th. Dean O'Brien, 15th. Mark McDonald in 16th. Baden Reed in 17th. Michael Kirkham in 18th. Richard Hunter, 19th. A great run from him, too. Starting 36th, ended up 19th. And rounding out our top 20 here tonight for race one is David Haynes. Hayden Dodman is going to come home in 21st position with Matt Morris in 22nd. Shannon Mason in 23rd with Jimmy Ball in 24th place. Gary Hamilton will come home in 25th after being involved in the lap one carnage with Mitch McLeod. Very unfortunate from him uh, getting involved in Cananzi's slide. Jason Hyde coming home in 27th. And now we come to... The lap downs and the retirements. Brett Cananzi, Mark Rayner, Steve Jansen, Scotty Harris, David Jellings, and Jordan McDonnell. A real shame for him after starting third. Michael Hammond in 34, 35th, Adam Briggs, and rounding out the field, Scott Zaslowski. A race of what could have been for him, certainly. Yeah, he didn't. He started in 30, uh, 31st there, so he wasn't horribly high up the grid, but Scott has some pretty good race pace on him and knows how to push the car in the race. So it's unfortunate that he got taken out due, due to that lag spike and these other, other guys as well in the race. You know, there was a lot that was going on and there probably would have been some awesome battles. You know, McDonald in third place would have fought hard with his OPR teammates to really try and push for that win as well. So hopefully he comes back for the next race because obviously he still does have a spot there. And he'll just have to fight his way through the pack. And well, hopefully that'll provide a spectacle for us and all of you sitting at home. Yeah, certainly. Don't go away. We'll be uh, gearing up for race two very, very soon. This is V8s Online on the iRacing Esports Network. And you are watching the Porsche Super Cup Australasia. So, you want to race in NASCAR. The road starts here. Introducing the eNASCAR at Night Series powered by iRacing. This is the gateway for all aspiring 13 to 16 year olds. Starting June 20th, ignite your dreams of one day racing in the top tiers of NASCAR. Go to www.iracing.com slash ignite for full details.
So what are you afraid of? Those feelings are made up. For anyone asking who is the best, we put in our hands up. Four more kilometers. Oh, there we go! Oh, there we go! Oh, there we go. Oh, this time, like the last time, I'm moving so fast, I'm ready to run. Frankie! Stop the inside of Hooky Sauce! Messenger throws the block, and he will keep him behind him. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Lower the lights down. Hand over my crown. You're watching V8s online on the iRacing Esports Network. This is the Porsche Super Cup Australasia Championship. And, uh, well, Brock, it was certainly an interesting race one. And uh, coming into race two, we're still getting set up for that at the moment. But uh, I think the implications of uh, what happened in race one, a lot of drivers have quite a bit of work to do in race two, don't they? Yeah, well, with that lag spike, um, it sort of it messed around a few drivers that probably should have done well, but unfortunately, due to that, were thrown back in the pack and laps down, much like Jordan McDonnell. So now they've they've got their work cut out for them, and I think that's going to put on a spectacle for us and make uh, make a show and see them cut through the pack, particularly in these cars here. It'll be interesting to see how a guy like Jordan McDonnell, who obviously knows this car back to front and really enjoys driving it, will do starting from. 35th, 36th on the grid, and having to cut his way through again in such a short race as well. He's going to be have to make. He's going to have to be making bulk moves every lap and really take advantage of the start to maximise the potential of the race. Yeah, that's the thing though. Um, coming into lap one, you have a bunch of drivers who really should be higher up the grid than they are trying to make those moves it also increases the chance of there being a major incident in those first couple of laps and the safety car may be brought back out so we may end up having yet another situation like race one where the drivers basically have no time at all to make their moves and uh and they eventually just run out of race basically yeah exactly it and we saw that a bit with the with the race race one sorry we had about 15 minutes left of running after that safety car. That was a quarter of the race gone because we had a safety car by turn four. If that happens again, these guys are going to be even more desperate to make moves because with 15 minutes left of racing for the night, they've really got to make those moves, make them stick because that's your final result. You're going to get the most points from being the furthest up, up the grid and then you've got to wait another two weeks until our next round. So particularly guys that are from OPR, Trick Sim Sports, Alters Esports, those guys, they're going to be wanting to make a big name, a big statement in this first round. And I think we're going to be seeing some, hopefully some great racing and also some guys really going at it hard to compete in that top five, as well as those ones coming back through the pack. Damage Control, Jordan McDonnell, Michael Hammond, uh, Scott Soloski as well. 
those guys, they've got to work their way back up through the pack, pick up as many points as they can, and then capitalize on their next race to make sure that they uh, make sure they get bulk points to help them towards the championship. Yes, indeed. And uh, I guess if you think about it, even if they don't succeed in that quest, you do have one drop round uh, from this series. So the some drivers may just elect to uh, remove this round from their results. That is a possibility. It's a long championship. We got uh, nine more rounds after this one. But uh, just looking forward a little bit to this Sunday, Brock, we've got the big championship in the OzNZ Sim Racing community. That's the V8 Supercar Online Premier Series, also here on the iRacing Esports Network. And, uh, you know, this network, uh, I, I think it's really good getting this thing set up, and it's really good to have a home for uh, for iRacing's major broadcasters. Oh, I think it's awesome. Uh, it really makes it a one-stop shop for anybody who loves iRacing. And you know, you you see, they don't just they don't just stream GTs, they don't just stream oval or anything like that. It is a broad spectrum of series. You come here, you get to see Le Mans style cars. You get to see the V8 Scops races this weekend. You get to see the Porsche Super Cup. Uh, your Oval Series, World of Outlaws, uh, your and uh, NASCAR Peak Anti Freeze Series as well. Like it is, it's awesome. I love it. I know I'm pretty much on here watching it every single day, and it's great that we at V8s Online can also be a huge part of this and broadcast some of our series up onto here, like the Super Cup and V8 Scops. Yeah, certainly. I think it's really good to get a sort of international flavour to everything as well. We've got broadcasters operating all over the world. We've got Race Spot in the uk us in australia we've got broadcasters uh, that span the entire globe as well as lsr tv as well those guys are on board as well so uh, no matter the kind of racing or the time of day that uh, that you're a fan of you have something to watch i suppose well yeah that's exactly it for us australians and new zealanders a lot of the that sort of the strength of field races that get streamed as well as the world of outlaws and the nascar series are on sort of mid to late morning so i always manage to throw them up on the tv while i'm doing housework world championship grand prix series a little bit earlier in the morning but some of those guys that are real die hard i know i definitely stay up and watch that so yeah it's great you really have something to watch all the time and like i said before variety it's it's awesome but any sort of car motorsport lover they should really come and check out iRacing Esports Network. Even if they don't have the game, you get some awesome racing like we've just seen in this last Porsche Super Cup race, as well as all the other series that iRacing offers up. It's it's pretty awesome. Yeah, certainly. You know, sim racing really picking up recently uh, in the last couple of years. And I think people are really waking up to uh, to the kind of spectacle, the kind of competition that, uh, that a format, an esports format like this offers. So... If there's ever a home for it, it's definitely here. Be sure to actually stay with us on the iRacing Esports Network because once again, V8 Scops this weekend. It's uh, it's certainly going to be an interesting one. We're racing at Laguna Seca there, a track that uh, we actually haven't visited in V8 Scops yet. I do believe the V8 Supercar has raced there in the past, but with this particular field, that level of competition that V8 Scops offers it's certainly going to be an interesting one. The VRS V8 Supercar Online Premier Series this weekend. We're going to go on a quick break once again. Don't go away, though. We'll be right back for race two here in the V8 Online Porsche Super Cup Australasia. You're watching the iRacing Esports Network. So what are you afraid of? Those feelings are made of. For anyone asking who is the best, we put in our hands up. More more kilometers. Oh, oh there we go! go. Like, this time, like the last time, I'm moving so fast, I'm ready to run. Wonky! Sounds like he's trying to hurt you, son! Ossinger throws the block, and he will keep him behind him. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Lower the lights down. Hand over my crown.
So, you want to race in NASCAR. The road starts here. Introducing the eNASCAR at Night Series powered by iRacing. This is the gateway for all aspiring 13 to 16 year olds. Starting June 20th, ignite your dreams of one day racing in the top tiers of NASCAR. Go to www.iracing.com slash ignite for full details. The following is a presentation of the iRacing Esports Network. V8s online on the iRacing esports network. Once again, you are watching the Porsche Super Cup Australasia. And uh, wow, it's certainly been an interesting event so far. My name is Reese Gardner. Once again, joining me, Brock Cadai. Brock, we've had a bit of a development, uh, a little bit of a change of plans for the rest of this event. There were two splits running uh, as of uh, last race, but Race Control has decided that everyone will be put into the same server for this second race. So we've got an extended grid for race two. How cool is that? Cool, scary. The words are interchangeable, right? Uh, yep. no, I think it'll be really cool. Um, you don't usually see races this big with these sort of uh, GT style cars. So I'm really interested to see how this goes. And it's going to be crazy. Like, I'm going to be, I'm going to be straight up honest here. It's going to be crazy. And I wouldn't want to be starting in the mid pack being 15th back to about 40th. So <laughs> it's, uh, I'm really interested to see how this goes. Another 20 minute sprint race here for race two, identical to the first one, no compulsory pit stop, none of that all out sprint. Hopefully we don't see a safety car, but with more cars being added into the server, the risk does go up yet again. It certainly does. Well, if you weren't here for race one, it was certainly an interesting one. We had uh, some technical issues and a bunch of people caught up in 
a pile up on lap one that extended for the next couple of corners really and a few other big incidents throughout the field and we noticed that quite a few of the guys up the front ended up uh, being put very far down so it's going to be quite an interesting one seeing them work their way up the field here of course i don't think they'll have to worry too much about starting too far down considering that uh, the drivers in split one that finished down the back will now technically be in the midfield uh, or towards the back of the midfield so it could always be worse i suppose but there's still a lot of work to do pressure from the front pressure from behind it's all on here yeah look uh the mid pack or the midfield they're words that scare me a lot when it comes to racing so uh i i'll be interested to see particularly how some of these guys that crashed out earlier on and had to go back uh and we're going to start from the back how they'll cut their way through now and also fend off the guys coming at them from behind so just having a look now at how many races we, it looks like we've got 49 races in the server at the moment oh goodness me that is that's quite a number we don't even see that many in a in a typical v8 scops race so this is quite the field we've got on our hands here at interlagos of course a very tight uh twisty but fast circuit here in sao paulo in brazil very historic venue opened in the late 1930s and has been entertaining people from a driver's and spectator's perspective ever since and now of course the eights online porsches they certainly turned it on so far we've got uh, quite a few drivers out there just sussing things out i'm watching david haynes in the team huge ass car trying to get his way around dan hanavier and uh, these guys will end up racing with quite a few people who they have not encountered on track yet. So it's testing times. Yeah, exactly. It. And that's going to be the interesting part as we were talking about that in race one and that, that difficulty of getting used to the people you're racing around. You notice that the, the driving standards tend to get better in a series as you get used to the people you've raced around. And by round 10, you can have an awesome battle for the whole race and not make contact once and respect each other but in this first set of races everything's new everyone's new the car hasn't been used in a series uh, broadcast by v8s online for quite a while now everything's a bit fresh um we've got the tracks a bit cooler so that makes people want to make moves and everything that may or may not be on some i'm interested to see here and also who our biggest movers are going to be. With 49 people in the field, we could see some seriously big movers if they, if there's a crash or if they really take advantage of the start and can cut through the field. Yes, indeed. Well, uh, the uh, the Porsche to start uh, from a standstill is, it's it's a bit of an interesting one. I, I haven't raced the car myself in quite some time. I have done some practice laps in it recently, but the one thing I remember about standing starts was that it was very difficult to get the wheels to spin off the line. That first gear uh, tends to bog down a little bit. So when you end up getting it off the line, you don't really stand to gain much of an advantage from the guys around you. It's only if you miss the start lights or thereabouts that anything drastic happens. So an entire 49 car field off the start line and into Lagos, I do think there is potential for quite a bit of drama because, well, actually looking at the start area of Interlagos, it goes over the crest of a hill and uh, coming uh, down towards turn one is certainly quite the, uh, <laughs> I, I'm not quite sure what the word is. Uh, it's it's just incredible. It's, it's a great piece of racetrack, but it really challenges you. Yeah, that's exactly it. This whole racetrack is a bit of a challenge with the the way that the elevation changes throughout the whole track and the camber on some of the corners is so different because of the way it works, you know? You're going uphill, up onto the main straight, then you come down that hill and then up that hump and right down a little chicane through turn one and two, basically, uh, as you go down the hill as well. And the car reacts differently to all the different elevation changes, the undulation, the bumps, the way there's that hump in the circuit, you know? This, the Porsche is a car that is very susceptible to all the little things on a track, to curbs and that sort of thing. It's uh, 
it takes those qualities from a GT car. So you've really got to be careful with the way you muscle it around a little bit. And the way you set it up, obviously, depending on whether it's softer or tighter, you can move the car differently, hit curbs differently. And that's sort of where some of these guys will win out and lose out, depending on how they drive the car. And that's really what this car is. It comes down to how well you drive it and what driving style you implement while using it. That's exactly right. And, you know, the Porsche 911 GT3 Cup in general is a car that really stands on its own compared to other race cars of its ilk. It runs on slightly uh, slightly harder tyres uh, than are used by its GT3 and uh, GTE brethren, and it doesn't have as much aero to work with. It's got that big wing on the back, but aerodynamics-wise, there's not too much you can do with it. And the nature of its layout, rear engine, rear wheel drive, basically the fastest Volkswagen Beetle you've ever seen. It, it ends up, uh, <laughs> it ends up, well, well uh, yeah, actually, you know, that is true. The, the 911 was originally um, based on the design for the Volkswagen Beetle, designed by the same guy, as a matter of fact. But uh, it, it, it lends to it a very interesting driving style. You have to really be careful about braking. You gotta, you gotta trail brake the car into the corners, get the car rotating, get that weight onto the front tires because there is basically no weight on the fronts as it stands when the car is at a standstill. And then you get onto the throttle and it's very easy to plow forward under throttle. You've got to keep that steering input in. You've got to make sure that the car even slides just a little bit, get that traction on those big wide rear tires. And that's how you end up going fast around a track in this thing. But around a, around a circuit like Interlagos, it, it becomes quite uh, finicky, quite difficult to work with because you've got such a variety of corners and there's something that can go wrong at every one of them. Well, here we are in the race session. Finally, Joshua Anderson will be starting from pole position here on account of winning race one. Michael Healy second. Forzan El Nabi and Anthony Winkleman in third and fourth. Fifth, Wayne Burke. Zachary Hanlon in sixth. And the top ten rounded out by Adam Highland, Scott Larnack, Cody Bircher, and Corey Preston. And in 11th place, we've got Ben Dowell, Joshua Skin in 12th, Griffin Gardner 13th, Dylan Shepard 14th, Dean O'Brien 15th, Mark McDonald 16th, Baden Reed 17th, Michael Kirkham 18th, Richard Hunter 19th, and our top 20s rounded out by Mr. David Haynes. 21st, Hayden Dodman with Matt Morris and Shannon Mason behind them. And uh, 24th position, Jimmy Ball, 25th, Gary Hamilton, 26th, Mitch McLeod, 27th, Brett Cananzi. The top 30 rounded out by Mark Rayner, Steve Jansen, and Scotty Harris. Unfortunately, we don't have time to go through all the rest of the field because the drivers are just gearing up for the race start now. The lights are up, the revs are rising, and we are go, go, go here in the Porsche Super Cup Australasia. A very good start from Michael Healy. He's going to attack Anderson into turn one here. Yeah, they're all just filing through in the back here now, watching back in the pack. It doesn't look like there's been any contact. Oh, yet. Actually, we've got a car around in the background there. That's Richard Hunt around. More contact there. They've almost blocked the track up. That is a shame to see. We've got Bruce Smith around as well. Ah, oh, that turn one, it does cause issues. We haven't got a safety car thrown yet, so we're going to keep on going. That's good to see. Yes, Coming indeed. down. We've had Corey Preston just escorted Ben Dow a little bit wide there, but it's gotten through, and that's an Anton Shepard through. And that's Ooh, got Winkle spinning round there. Oh. That's, that is major. That is, and he's going to try and make his way back onto the circuit. We've got another car off there. Who on earth is that? And that is the caution flag out. Oh, what a shame. Once again, the caution flag out on lap one. Steve Jansen going very wide off the circuit. It actually looks like uh, he had a little bit of help there from uh, from Jimmy Ball going off the circuit. But uh, we'll get a replay from the very start just to see what on earth went on down the field. What a shame for quite a few drivers. It just looks to me like little bits of contact going on all throughout the field and they end up snowballing into bigger and bigger incidents. 
Yeah, well, that's it. Like I was saying before, these cars don't take much to get unsettled. And then, you know, particularly under braking, you get a little hit, you hit the brakes a little harder and you're spinning around and into the field. So it's uh, it's unfortunate, but yet we're back on the safety car again, which means this is going to turn into uh, more of a 15-minute sprint when you think about it, as it did last time. Yes, indeed. And goodness me, I mean, like, I'm just I'm just watching back myself that, uh, that incident with uh, Richard Hunter all uh, basically all of his wheels off the ground certainly not what you want to see on lap one of a motor race real or virtual and uh wow i mean for the for the vast majority of the field it was a clean start but it's just those one or two bits of contact that that ruin it for quite a few people yeah well that's it and um obviously none of the contacts intentional and being such a in such a packed situation you know there were multiple instances of three wide racing through there and you just get squeezed in the middle there a little bit nowhere you can go the contact gets made one guy gets shot off into the wall another guy spins and uh that's safety car it certainly is and uh clarification for winkelman's incident it was uh it was wayne burke that uh, made rear end contact with him and that's what uh, eventuated in Anthony Winkleman's race going completely the wrong way. Just looks to me like uh, it was a case of two drivers both wanting the same bit of track and um, maybe not quite being as aware of, uh, of where they were on the circuit. Wayne Burke trying to follow his line out to the outside and, uh, well, Winkleman was already there. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Um, again, racing incident maybe get a penalty for it just depending on the severity of it obviously Winkleman got spun around fairly violently he's back in 28th at the moment from fourth and he's gonna he's still going out there I imagine he'll be down on straight line speed a little bit and potentially handling his rear wing looks like the Hulk has smashed it right in the middle of it so uh yeah not exactly the best looking car at the moment but he's gonna stay out there championship points he's gonna try and get as many as he can but looking back through the field here see if we've got any big movers because of that. We've got Taylor Oaks has come up 10 positions, Phil Gadd as well. Uh, biggest losers have been Richard Hunter down 26, uh, down in 45th position, 46th position, sorry, but he's still out there. So it looks like most of this field is still out circulating. We've got Jason Cossey as well, plus 16. Ooh, sorry, yeah. I missed him. That's, yeah. that's really good to start this race. He's pretty much come from dead last, uh, sorry, second from last and uh, up to 34th, and the race can only get better for it. Yeah, certainly. Very good run from Costi so far. It's just a matter of um, keeping it nice and safe from now on. Don't uh, get involved in any incidents if you can help it. Also noticing another um, another big loser out of those uh, shenanigans on the first lap was Michael Hammond. He started in 33rd position. He finds himself in 45th right now. He got spun at turn one. He was one of the, the casualties, and uh, he's actually going into the pits here. As are a couple of other guys as well, Richard Hunter and Damon Stockton to get damage repaired. We've got Tim Weston for one performance racing in there as well. Oh, Scott Wasson. Um, he was uh, spun on the, uh, on the pit straight. Looks like he just got on the brakes a bit too hard, pinched the rears, and just went straight into the wall. He's straight back into the pits. Oh, that's unfortunate. I guess they, these cars, uh, you gun them and they do have a little bit of torque underneath them. So I guess uh, that's unfortunate for him. And we're just watching that as well. I was just keeping an eye on Jordan McDonnell. He got a warning from race control about his internet and he's blinking in and out. And he's actually had someone have to swerve around him on pit exit there to avoid hitting him. And yeah. uh, I, they, they might actually get a exiting pit lane penalty for that one because they actually yeah. went around the solid white line which is unfortunate there so we'll They're see really how Jordan goes up. yeah it's a big checkup coming up here so I'm glad I don't think anyone's hit each other there yes indeed that is a bit of a shame I mean internet issues they are I guess a stand-in for some mechanical issues that you can find in real life racing you know, it's uh, it's it's your hardware that's that's letting you down. So it's uh, it is quite frustrating when you're on the receiving end of one of those problems. But fingers crossed that Jordan can work it out. He's a spirited racer. Oh, and actually, hold on, getting an update from race control. He is uh, Jordan McDonald has been told by race control to return to the pits. 
because his internet is unsafe. So that is going to be a big blow to McDonald's opening championship. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Like you said, hardware, there's not much you can do about it. And some days your internet's good and some days it's bad. You just got to you got to take the good with the bad in this case. So he, uh, the night looks so promising for him and it looks like Interlagos and good results for him were just not meant to be, unfortunately. So hopefully he can come back in a couple of weeks' time. Internet's going to be behaving and we can see him, we can see him again. So, yeah, that's... Uh, definitely got the confirmation there that he's got to return back to the pit lane it's still out there at the moment but uh, i'm sure he'll be coming back in fairly soon to abide by uh, race controls orders yes indeed well lights out on the safety car they are coming back on to the start finish straight presently and so the field will resume under the control of joshua anderson for this next run they're three laps into this race it will soon be four and the green flag is out. Anderson is away. Have a look at the jump that Zach Hanlon has got there. He's actually going to try and go for the move on Michael Healy coming into turn one. But Healy trying to hold it around the outside. Oh, that's a bit awkward. And it looks We've like got people around at turn through. one. Oh, no. There we go. More people around at turn one. Looks like a pretty big one here, too. Joshua Skin involved as well as... Oh. Oh, Scott Soslowski, Daniel Misdale as well. Oh, Michael Hammond around, actually, in the in the uh, the runoff at turn three. He's just gone straight back to the pits there. Yeah, I imagine there's probably a little bit of frustration in that as well after getting involved in that first accident. But the race continues on now. We've got David Haynes battling it out with the number 11, Hayden Dodman, further on in the lap here. And Haynes has got that move made. Looking back up in the pack, it looks like they've all sorted it out a little bit got an OPR card, Dylan Shepard throwing it down the inside. Oh, hang on a minute. Got another, oh, Ben Dowell and a couple of other cars involved in an incident. Michael Kirkham was spun by Brett Cananzi. Cananzi just going up the inside and uh, they made contact. So that's another incident. I mean, oh, some people need to get it sorted. Yeah, look, it's, uh, I mean, I know there's more people in the server and everything, but seriously, guys, um, it's, uh, you can you can all take it a bit careful out there. We don't want to see cars being taken out. We don't want to see slow cars out there. We want to see a good race. So yeah. we've still got we've oh we've just got someone turned around as they are coming onto the main straight. That's more uh, carnage there. They've just slid out. That's yeah. And yeah, we that's, just had that's the two Jason Corsi. Oh my God. Yep. Yeah, someone just flipped. Yeah, so we're going back well, to Josh Anderson up the front here. Uh, he is leading by couple of, uh, by about a second out front there with Hanlon got Healy, El Nabi and Larnak very close behind and Preston has worked his way up to six as well from from race one he started 20th and now he's in sixth in race two so he's doing really well behind him we've got Cody Bircher, Wayne Burke and Dylan Shepard engaged in battle nose to tail as they come through this part of the track here with the Synergy Sim Racing car of Burke in an OPR sandwich at the moment. Yes, and Dean Burke with a bit of damage on the front of his car. They're going for the move, actually, on Cody Bircher. And Bircher won't be able to hold it around the outside there. It's difficult through there. He's actually let Shepard through as well. And goodness oh. me, Corey Preston, a big slide and spinning. Fortunately... so well tonight. Yeah, that is a real shame for him. Fortunately, he has not involved anyone else in that. So uh, that's, um, I guess, uh, the only casualty being himself. But that battle pack up there is uh, getting quite feisty. You've got Adam Highland, uh, Hayden Dogman, David Haynes, Mark McDonald, Dean O'Brien, Griffin Gardner, Bircher, Shepard, Burke, and then a big gap to Scott Larnack as Zach Hanlon, we're noticing, has actually made a mistake and he's opened himself up to a run here from El Nabi. Healy's actually found his way back in front of him and Hanlon and El Nabi going side by side down the front straight oh goodness me and Hanlon able to defend fortunately for him got a car coming out of the pits just behind them that is Dan Hanavier looks like he'll just come out slotted in between the front runners so Michael Healy now under pressure here from Zach Hanlon actually going for the defensive line it's a good run there we by go. Hanlon there. Yeah, over under as well. So that is pretty easy done there from Hanlon. Healy, I don't know if he'll try and go for the move. Meanwhile, behind them, ooh, Healy does go for the move. And uh, 
El Navi and Larnak continuing to battle behind them. Have a look at Hanlon, though. Big run there, going off the circuit there, trying to maintain that position, just running off onto the curb. And they're continuing to run side by side through this twisty hairpin section. Healy has just got that traction down pat. A little bit of contact between those guys. And oh, wow, that is fantastic. Healy maintaining that position from Zach Hanlon. But I get the feeling that Hanlon is not quite done with him here see this is the kind of racing that we want to see rock yeah this is this is what the porsche carrera cup cars are made for and oh, oh, had a big moment there oh, he's right no. off the track on the left hand side there so we'll go back to healy and hanlon here because they're side by side on the main straight but just to update that is larnak off the track there hanlon yeah. has got that position now but healy's gonna pop back into that draft hanlon has gone mega defensive here as healy is going to try and take the regular line and see if he can make it work there He's going to cut back down. Oh, they made contact there. Nose yeah. to tail contact, but that's Meanwhile, all right. Dylan Shepard just uh, sliced up the inside of Forza and El Navi in the background too. So lots happening here in the top five at the moment. I'll tell you who is the big beneficiary out of all of this is Josh Anderson, who has a massive lead right now. Yeah, he's, uh, he's been able to just check out that move that he made on his teammate in Healy in race one has really paid off for him. So he is looking strong right now, about four and a half laps left to go, six minutes and 50 seconds of the race to uh, cruise home at the moment because Hanlon has still got Healy all over him in the background of that shot there. And uh, we're going to have to wait and see here. Healy may be able to take him again, but in the background as well, El Nabi and Shepard are still battling it out hard. Burke's getting into this. There are battle packs all over the place here, Reese. Oh, and El Nabi's round. Yeah, Shepard's big lock from Hanlon. Oh. That's, uh, that's contact there again. So that was slight. El Nabi's going to keep on going there with Shepard and Burke, but that was very close to being nasty there. But this has just brought those cars that were in the back end of the top 10 right into this battle now. So they're, they're going side by side as they come up over the rise here. Waiting for my camera to update. Yeah, here we go. The triple two car is fighting it out hard. Griffin Gardner has managed to pass through Dean O'Brien as we've got El Nabi is in the slipstream of one of the OPR cars. They come down to turn one. There is a lot going on here as they're going three wide down here. There's contact there between Gardner and one of the Synergy Sim Racing cars. I think it was Dean O'Brien as well. Oh, it's all going on. Yeah, it certainly is all going on here right now. And uh, in the midst of all of that, Jordan McDonnell is uh, removed from the server. Uh, so evidently didn't get the message from race control and uh, tried to make his case stay back out on the track. But, well, he's uh, ended up uh, with that position taken away from him. Oh, goodness me. Michael Healy and Zach Hanlon still going at it. Little bit of contact, Hanlon almost going for the move up the inside. That's, uh, yeah, these guys, they're going crazy here now. Hanlon in that Ultra Sea Sports Porsche is in a bit of a sandwich here with Healy and Shepard, and they're fighting it out hard here. I, I don't know about you, Reese, but I'm absolutely loving this. Healy's got a little bit of a gap here, and Hanlon's going to have to be careful because Shepard has got major pace coming into the back end of this race with about two laps to go this time round, according to my timing here so healy's got a gap he can relax a little bit he can try and charge doubt he'll be able to catch anderson but you know what set the fastest lap hamlin has got to worry about keeping third place in this race to the guy behind him as he's got shepherd trying to hunt him down burke has fallen back a bit and has got a bit of a gap back to bircher el nabi is trying to catch back up to bircher after having that little tap made on him but these guys fighting for second, third, and fourth are really the battle to watch at the moment as we've got Hanlon. He's still maintaining that third position. Shepard is so close behind him, trying as much as he can to get that position, which is only helping Healy move further ahead. The race has had to jump out for a minute, so surprise everybody. Hello. Um, what a race this has turned into being. Oh, Shepard, big move up the inside in contact between he and Hanlon. Hanlon's nearly gone around there as well, but luckily he's kept it. He's kept it going there. Well done. And 
now they're going to go side by side into the next corner here. This is some gr absolutely awesome battling we're seeing here. Hanlon is going to try round him up on the outside. They're still going to be side by side here. And we've seen they can go side by side through this whole section. They've made oh. contact again. That's Shepard around as he comes back on the track there. And they've made contact again. Shepard has gone around and out of the way. That was very lucky to not hit anybody else coming through there. Hanlon has got a lot of damage. That's a shame. And Shepard's been hit again by it looks like Hayden Dodman in the background there as he was trying to rejoin. So he's going to cut right across and around to try and get out of the way of some of these cars. And it looks like he may have a fairly bruised car after all that, Jay. That is really unfortunate. Yeah, it is. And big loser out of this whole entire battle and this big fight has been Forzan Al Nabi. Saw him start in the second row. He just dropped back. He slowly creeps his way back forward and then loses some more spots again. So, um, Forzan's really lost out big time in this entire race. And Cody Bircher now starting to put pressure on the back of Wayne Burke as they close up on Zach Hanlon. His car looks a little bit battered and bruised as Hanlon. Yeah, it definitely does. That contact with the, the couple of lots of contact with Shepard. The front of his car looks a little bit crunched in. So all these guys with their perfect looking cars, straight line speed and potentially handling are going to be a lot better. So he's got to watch out here. Uh, timing is showing two laps to go this time around. Two and a half minutes left in this race. And uh, it is anything but sorted for this third place on the podium here. As we've got Wayne Burke is having a little... Sorry, my uh, replay is being a bit funny here. Excuse me for one second, Jake. Right. Wayne Burke's tucked right in behind Zach Hanlon. Bircher just ahead. Uh, sorry, just behind. El Narby and Griffin Gardner all close together. And in the background, I'm just going to go to Mitchell McLeod. Corey Preston, Scotty Harris. Preston and Harris clash wheels. We're to a contact. This is for the spots just outside the top 10. This is 11th through to 14th. And here comes Preston back up the inside. That'll be a little bit of red mist there. And Scotty Harris threw, but there was big, big wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact there. Yeah, you'll have to excuse me a second, Jay. Uh, I've just been kicked out of the server by my internet. Everyone's having a, a good time with internet tonight. Uh, Reese has uh, had internet dropouts as well, but I'll stick with it. At the moment, we're going to have one lap to go. There'll be one minute and 25 on the clock when Josh Anderson crosses the start line. I tell you what, Jay, it's a, uh, <laughs> it's a great race so far. Fonte jumping in here. Welcome, guys. Lucky we got the backup crew here. Definitely the B team jumping in the booth. Yeah, now. B team's on form. Now, Wayne here we Burke go, Anderson. In the pits on the last lap. This is strange. What's happened to Wayne Burke? Yeah, certainly not what you want to do on your last lap. Maybe he's uh, forgot to put enough fuel in. I'm wondering as well whether there's potentially a drive-through penalty due to incidents that we saw earlier in the race. He's driven straight through the lane and back out on the circuit. So I'm going to say a drive-through penalty for Wayne Burke. But uh, Hanlon now defending from Cody Bircher. Different car tackling him from behind now. And uh, Hanlon's yeah. really struggling with his car. Yeah, he is. Bircher looking very racy at this stage. He's only got a few more corners to get it done. Is he going to pop him up into this next right hand? A really good passing opportunity. He's going to look. Shows nose, but no, he backs out. He gets a decent run out here. Hanlon going really wide, so this could definitely give an advantage to Bircher. I think I'm noticing about Hanlon's car is he's getting a lot of front lockups at the moment. He's really struggling to pull the car up, and a few little minor mistakes. The clock is about to hit zero. There's not much time left at the moment. Josh Anderson comes out of the final complex of corners. A great drive, made a really, really good pass in race one to get himself into first for race two. And he's never looked like giving that spot up. Well done, Josh Anderson. Wins race one, race two. The new season of the V8s online. Porsche Super Cup Australasia with Michael Healy coming home in second. Hanlon's going to hold on for third. Good drive from him. Very beaten, broken and battered car. Cody Bircher in fourth with El Nabi fifth, Griffin Gardner sixth. David Haynes somehow has finished in seventh position. He's come up all the way through the field in that one. Yeah, stay out of trouble when you're uh, going to get up there, especially with uh, the race that we've had. Lots of kind of drawing some wheels and getting into each other. So, yeah, uh, you certainly don't have to be fastest to, to get up there. But if um, you're fast and, and you can be consistent, then you're, you're generally going to make your way up the field. Change of position on the last lap. Ben Dow well out of position. Cross getting involved in the incident at the start of the race. He's going to get it home in 32nd position in the end. Passing Daniel Misdale on the last lap. Now, 
Wow, what a race that was. Congratulations go to One Performance Racing though. They've uh, definitely worked out the setup and definitely nailed uh, everything right in this race. Anderson, Healy, yeah. Bircher, 1 2 4 is a great result for the team. Yeah, exactly. They were very fast in qualifying right up there at the pointy end. They do plenty of laps in this car, so they're certainly uh, not slow. And um, yeah, they're just uh, their consistency through the through the race wasn't ideal, but yeah, certainly to come home with a win-win uh, in both the races is, is pretty good for, for round one. So the results up on screen, winning this race in the end by nearly five seconds. Josh Anderson, great job once he got in that lead in race one. Never been matched by anybody. Michael Healy finishes in second position. Zach Hanlon does get home in third in the end with Cody Bircher in fourth. Fozen Alnabi finishes in fifth. Griffin Gardner, the highest placed privateer in sixth position. David Haynes in seventh with Hayden Dodman getting into eighth, but he will uh, be looked at with a couple of incidents that he was involved in. They'll be watched over by race control post-race. Adam Highland in ninth and Mitchell McLeod rounds out the top ten. In 11th position, we've got Anthony Winkleman with Wayne Hewitt in 12th. Dylan Shepard finishes the race in 13th. Decent recovery drive after dropping back through the field a long way. But Wayne Hewitt won the second split race in race one to come through from 36th up into uh, into 12th position. So well done to Wayne Hewitt in that one. Steve Anson finishes in 14th position with Larnack in 15th. Wayne Burke with the drive through penalty finishes in 16th in the end. Mark McDonald in 17th with Jellings in 18th. Jimmy Ball 19th and rounding out the top 20. Scott Sislowski over the page again to Dean O'Brien and Damon Stockton. Richard Hunter, Adam Briggs and Michael Coleman. The top 25 with Michael Kirkham, Blake Delaney, Scotty Harris, Corey Preston and Taylor Oates rounding out the top 30. Reese Keane, Ben Dow, Daniel Misdale, Shannon Mason and Baden Reed. The top 35. Jason Cossey, Alex Court, Joshua Skin, David Mulhall, and Scott Lawson. Top 40, second last page of drivers, the drivers who are two laps down and further back, Dan Hanover, Phil Gadd, Brett Cananzi, Jordan McDonald, Tim Weston, Gary Hamilton, Matt Morris, Michael Hammond, Daniel H, Bruce Smith, and Mark Rayner. Massive field of drivers for round number one in the V8 Online Porsche Super Cup. So yeah, what a great, a great event, great, great, great start. Yeah, it has. Yeah, the uh, drivers out there not really racing with each other on the regular basis. So it takes a, a little bit for them to kind of get the consistency up and know where well, who's going to give you room on track and who's not. And, and as the series evolves, it kind of the racing gets a little bit cleaner. Um, so, yeah, very difficult track then to Lagos. It's um, very tight and twisty. And sort of, uh, although there's lots of runoff areas, there's... Yeah, lots of uh, opportunity to clash with drivers out there. So I'm sure we will see the racing get a lot cleaner as the season goes on. Yep, for sure. And we will quickly grab a chat with our race winner. Congratulations to Josh Anderson. Picking up a win in race one and race two. Well done, Josh. Uh, very, very smooth sailing in race two. Race one was not as easy, though. Oh, got you. Mike not working there. Josh, can see you're trying to talk, but no sound coming through. Try again. No. Technical, technical difficulties technical are the uh, theme of the night, aren't they? Uh, technical issues everywhere. Uh, see if you can disconnect and come back. Josh, it might be working. We've uh, had that happen to us a couple of times. Hopefully I have Josh back with us in a second. Uh, but a, a fantastic start to the season. Obviously a little bit messy in regards to driving standards, but that will improve no doubt as the season progresses. Hopefully we've got you this time, Josh. No, still having technical issues. No, yeah, doesn't that, look like it's working, unfortunately. Yeah, that's a bit unfortunate there. Uh, like I said, theme of the night is technical difficulties with the, the server lag spike in the first race. And then Brees and I both having internet issues and now microphone's not working. It's all going wrong, isn't it? It is. So on that note, I think we might wrap it up for the night and, uh, Make sure that we get off before something really bizarre happens. But make sure you subscribe to the iRacing Esports Network to keep up to date with all of the action here on iRacing. Next broadcast on the network will be the iRacing Le Mans series from Suzuka. 
And our next broadcast here on V8 Online will be Sunday night here on the iRacing Esports Network for round number eight of the V8 Supercar Online Premier Series presented by Cup Price Racing, West End Mazda, and of course, Virtual Racing School Brock. Uh, well done on uh, on a great first night and uh, welcome back to the booth after being away last week. Yeah, thanks, Jay. It's it's good to be back, and uh, I'm hoping to be in the in the booth as well for SSA next week and continuing on. And yeah, well, the race was great tonight, and these cars are awesome. So I'm really looking forward to the next round and seeing what these guys can whip out for us when we get. I think it's uh, Circuit Gilles Villeneuve is our next race, so I'm really keen for that. Yeah, of course, next Wednesday night, every Wednesday night on Viat Online, we will have uh, either GT3 or Porsche Super Cup action. Thanks to GT Legs Australia. Also, Fonty, thank you for jumping in when uh, Brock was having issues as well. No, nah, no worries at all. No, it's been a great event, certainly being a part of it. And um, yeah, we're really excited here at V8 Online for all of what's coming along. It's great to be part of the iRacing Esports Network. Do make sure you jump on and subscribe to the channel. There's going to be plenty of racing over the next few months, few years, forever. Yep, uh, definitely. Rick and... Um, yeah, it's, it's going to be great. So we look forward to being a part of that and want to thank iRacing for the opportunity there. Yep, we'll give one more shot with Josh Anderson. Hopefully we got your third time lucky if we got you, Josh. Certainly hey, do. there we go. That's much better. Congratulations on the, the win in the second race. But as I was saying, the first race, nowhere near as easy as the second one. Well, no, because I um qualifying just hard with traffic and then the track goes off late. So I just didn't get the job done, which made it difficult. I got a bit of a gift, turn two, and then, yeah, um, unfortunately for Healy, he just made a small mistake, but I had to work for it. And then um, and then again, like in, in race two, um, they all started battling behind, and I just sort of drove drove on. So it was a good night. It was a good night of racing. It was, um, I, like at the front, I found the racing really nice and clean, so it was good. For you and your team uh, having someone like michael healy jump in and, and help you guys out for this championship it's a pretty big coup pretty big signing that you guys have got there yeah when um chef told me i certainly was surprised but it's been very good is it's just been an awesome help to have someone a bit of a benchmark which is good we're going to see you around for the full championship i know that you uh, have real racing commitments as well but uh, hopefully we'll see you for most of the the season proper uh definitely man i um yeah i I, I really enjoy racing the Porsche. I've sort of stopped racing it officially, cause, um, but for league racing, it's good fun. It's a, um, I think I'll try and do the whole season, yeah. Well, congratulations on a great performance tonight. Well done, and we better let you thank who you need to thank. Yeah, uh, thanks to OPR, uh, Dylan Shepard, and um, Vanderval Sim Racing for letting me race with OPR tonight. It's fantastic. Well, congratulations to you, Josh, on picking up the win in both race one and race two, winning the first round of the V8s online. Porsche Super Cup Australasia, well done. Thank you. And on that note, we will wrap up our broadcast. Big thank you to everyone for tuning in. As we said, our next broadcast here on V8s online will be Sunday night for Virtual Racing School V8 Supercar Online Premier Series, the next broadcast on the iRacing Esports Network. Make sure you subscribe. It is on Friday with the iRacing Le Mans series. Make sure you tune in. Until next time, we thank you for watching here on the iRacing Esports Network, and we'll see you next time. a presentation of the iRacing Esports Network.